Well, good morning, and welcome to worship this morning at Carmichael Presbyterian Church, either here in person or welcome to those of you who have joined us live stream. We are glad that you are together uh, with one another for this time of worship. It is uh, the 6th of February, 2022, and we continue to be a community called to engage in a life of service and ministry following Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ivan Herman, along here with my colleague, Pastor Keith DeVries, and we're uh, uh, glad that you've joined us and hope that you can also let us know who you are. Uh, those of you in person have signed in, I hope, as you've come in. And those of you who are online, I hope you will uh, find that Google link and uh, click on that, fill it out, let us know who you are that you've joined with us and joined together in worship. And then also uh, with that form, you can also let us know how you're doing, what your prayer requests are for this week as well. Following our worship service, we're going to have an annual congregational meeting, and I hope that you will stick around uh, here in the sanctuary to, uh, to enjoy that annual congregational meeting. It's a joy to do our work together as a church. Uh, those of you who are online, you're also welcome to stick around. Uh, and view that and then learn from it. And if you would like to uh, see or hear some new ways of engaging in a life together and in, the, in this community of faith, uh, I hope that you will see that this morning. Uh, all the materials that went with the annual report uh, and with our meeting are available online as well as available. They were available at the tables when you came in if you didn't get one. Um, those are also available online so you can find those and uh, learn more about our life of ministry in 2021 and moving forward. Following that time together, we'll have a coffee fellowship uh, time in McMillan Hall. So I hope that after the meeting, you will go over to McMillan and spend some time in conversation and perhaps even dreaming how it is that God is calling us as a community of faith to be engaged in ministry together. Uh, Carmichael Presbyterian Church is a Matthew 25 congregation, which means we are committed to building congregational vitality dismantling structural racism in our society and in our church. And we are committed to eradicating systemic poverty. And I hope that you will join us on this journey of faith together as we make an impact on our community and on our world. And one of the ways that we are making an impact on our community is through uh, feeding those who are food insecure. Next week is our Super Bowl of Caring. So you will see as you leave the building uh, next week, there will be youth holding soup pots that are labeled Super Bowl of Caring. You're welcome to give a cash or check offering. Or if you have uh, goods that you would like to, to provide, we can receive those and use those in our food closet. I'm telling you this morning so that you come next week prepared, right? Uh, if you are worshiping with us online, you are welcome to give, to give a donation uh, to the church for Super Bowl of Caring so that we can continue to support and meet the needs of our community. We are also an earth care congregation, and a brief reminder for our youth, we are meeting this afternoon at 2 p.m. at Santa Anita Park for a creek cleanup. So if you're available to come and join us, we'll have a small crew out there doing a creek cleanup this afternoon. And finally, today is a communion Sunday. So if you're at home and you have not yet prepared something to eat and something to drink, uh, we celebrate the Lord's Supper today and hope that you'll take a few moments to make that table ready. Now I'd like to invite Bill Dunn to come forward as we begin our worship service together so that he can call us and we can be a people together in worship. Good morning. Please rise in body and spirit and join me in the call of worship. God asks, whom shall I send? Here I am. Jesus says, follow me in sharing my work. Here I am. The Holy Spirit gathers each one of us for worship. Here we are to worship God.
As we stand in the presence of God, let us confess the ways we have strayed and failed in faithfulness. Let us now join in our unison prayer of confession. God, you call us to humble service, to love our neighbors and our enemies, to do justice and offer mercy. But we do not respond as we should. We pretend we do not hear your call. We excuse ourselves from Christian work, citing self-doubt and fear. Our desire for comfort outweighs our desire to do your will. Forgive us, God. Have mercy upon us. Return us to you and your way. Amen. Please continue with your silent prayers of confession. Amen. Now hear the assurance of pardon. Your guilt was departed and your sin is blotted out. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen.
Thank you, choir, from uh, 2016. Yeah, that was great. Um, I'd like to invite my young friends. I see some of them out there. Come on and sit with me on the steps, maybe. Yeah, come on. I see you. That's right. So did anybody have a power issue this morning? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I'm looking at my watch and about, oh, did you guys have a power problem this morning? No. No? Oh, okay, you wouldn't know. Okay. So about, what, seven or so? Yeah, it went out, and my watch starts going off because it tells me if the power here had gone off. And it did, right? It went off here, too. And the first thing I thought about was, oh, no. How are we going to do church without power, microphones, computers, technology, the organ? I was getting worried. But then it came back on again. Yay! That was, oh, but you didn't even know what was going on, did you? Okay. Well, no harm, no foul. All right. Hey, do um, you guys ever play catch or anything, people? What? You do? Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's, I love this ball. It's kind of soft in here. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, it's what? It's, foam. it's what? It's a foamy ball. Yeah, it's a foamy ball. Yeah. It's a dodgeball. What's it say in there? Gator skin dodgeball. You ever played gator skin dodgeball? Yeah, good catch. All right. Oh, yeah. That works. Oh, look at Here, Thelma. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> you notice how I've been silent about that last week thing. And if Thelma and I both have been in mourning all week after certain things didn't transpire the way they were supposed to uh, after that game or games. So anyway, you know, yeah, you play catch, right? It's fun to play. You guys ever tr uh, caught uh, or played catch with a lizard? Try to catch a lizard? Have you ever done that? Yeah. Get, were you successful? No. No. They're like, they move so fast. They're hard to catch, right? How about uh, butterfly? You ever caught a butterfly? Um, my brother has. Okay. Yeah, cool. I mean, you know, you get the same trick. Have you ever caught the cold? Yes. Oh, you catch the cold? Yeah. Have you ever had this catchy tune in your head uh, that kept going on and you, you couldn't get rid of it? Yeah. Encanto. Yeah? What song is What song? Encanto. El Canto? Yeah, it's on Disney. Oh, it's all on Disney. The Disney, sure. Disney songs are like that. They are like catchy, like it's a small world. You know, right? It gets in your head, it never leaves. It's, we don't talk about Bruno, and it's in the top ten. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you get those things in your head, and oh. Well, today I was going to talk about catching things, um, and I was going to talk about this story in Luke's Gospel about the disciples and catching fish. Do you guys fish? Do you ever go fishing? You have? Okay. I really don't like it. What? Boring. It's boring. That's what I say. And there's these smelly, slimy fish they want you to catch, and that's no fun. Yeah, I didn't, I'm not a big fan of catching fish either. But the story today is about Jesus, and he's teaching to these large crowds, and the crowds are kind of pushing in on him, so he asks these fishermen, hey, can I get in your boat, and can we go out offshore a little ways, and I'll kind of use the boat as my pulpit. You know, and then he could sit out there. So he did. He, he, there was this fisherman, Simon, and he went out in his boat, and he's out there, and he's and preaching and, and teaching the crowds, and, and that worked out really well. But then when it was done, he said, hey, Simon, let's go out into the deep water and let's go catch some fish. And Simon said, well, you know, Jesus, I do this for a living. It's, it's my profession. And we were just out there all night. We didn't catch a thing, so it's kind of pointless for us to go back out there in the water and try to catch fish. They're just, they're none there. It's boring, we're not gonna catch them. But Jesus insisted. And he said, no, we really, I really want you to go out into the water and let's put down the nets. So Simon said, I, you know, just to make him happy, I guess, said, okay, I'll do it. So Simon and uh, his uh, fishing partners were kind of out there too, and they, they go out in the deep water, you throw the nets down, and what do you think happened? They 
you know this story. Yeah, they caught all of these fish, and so much so that the nets were about to break, and the other fishermen were helping, and they had fish too, and nobody could believe this huge catch of fish that they had. It was just huge. And then you know what Jesus said to them? He said, that part is really kind of unimportant because I want you to go catch people instead. Yeah, oh, what? What's that? Yeah. Oh, do you know fishermen become disciples? Exactly. Because what they said, they go, what do you mean catch people? And he said, well, look at, follow me. I'll teach you all about that. And so they did. They left their nets, their boats, everything behind, all those fish they just caught. And they followed Jesus to learn how to catch people by telling them about God's love. And to help them understand, hey, you catch them and bring them to church and teach them about God's love. And that's what they learned how to do. And that's what we all get to learn how to do as well. Oh, I thought it actually put people in the water. No, it didn't actually put people in the water. No, not quite. But, they, but Jesus said, come and catch people with me so they'll be a part. And that's why you have places like this with all these people sitting in the pews. Because somewhere along the line, they were caught up in the love of God and Jesus Christ and committed themselves to being a part of the church and following Jesus. And that's what we get to do as well. Hey, thanks for coming up. Thanks for being with me today. You can give me that. I'll, okay, I'll take that back. And you guys can go back to your seats. Be the family. Thanks. Appreciate it.
I've chosen uh, an Old Testament passage of Scripture for the basis of the sermon today. Uh, this is coming from the Psalms, Psalm 138, considered a, a song or a th- psalm of thanksgiving. Hear now God's word to us coming from this psalm of David. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, of great is the glory of the Lord. For for though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. May God bless to us the reading of God's holy word. Amen. On Friday, I joined with the family of Dennis Marks presiding over his graveside service at East Lawn Cemetery. Yesterday, I joined with the family of Shirley Weber and conducted her memorial service here in the sanctuary. These two saints of the church were both 93 years old when they passed into the church triumphant. Both were poets and both left a lasting legacy of love for their families. At the graveside service on Friday, I shared one of my my favorite Dennis Marks stories, and it goes like this. One Sunday morning, as Dennis and Nancy were leaving the sanctuary, Dennis commented on my sermon, something that folks sometimes do, (laughs) usually in private and not in front of me. But on that particular Sunday, Um, I used the word Eucharist in my sermon without saying what that word meant. So as Dennis greeted me that Sunday morning, he thanked me for using such a fine Greek word. Now, if you know Dennis, he's very, very proud of his Greek heritage. And he just wanted to make sure that I knew what that word meant. It means to give thanks or thanksgiving, and is often associated with our gathering around the Lord's table. Sometimes pastors have been known to throw out words we just expect you all to know uh, without explaining, and that was one of those Sunday sermons. But Dennis just wanted to make sure that I, in fact, knew. That Greek word, Eucharist, to give thanks, for thanksgiving, ties in very nicely with Psalm 138. As the psalmist starts with these words, I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Inviting us to sing this song, this psalm of thanksgiving that includes words of gratitude, words of thanksgiving, and Eucharistic images of worship. The first three verses of this song of thanksgiving celebrates God's might, God's kindness, God's faithfulness. A song of thanksgiving is often accompanying the offering, and offering translated in the Hebrew is tada, which means generally thanksgiving, or I give thanks, appropriately matched with an offering. This song was most often used in a communal liturgy after the people of Israel had returned from exile. To give thanks with one's whole being is an expression that communicates wholehearted desire 
to give thanks and to love God. And this has its basis in Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, which reads, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your might. This is our mandate as God's people, to love God fully and completely. In verses 1 through 3, we are given the setting for singing the song of thanksgiving, reflecting upon the task of the community of faith to witness to God's power and goodness in the world with many gods that seek our attention. The reference to gods is small g, by the way, and it is plural. So kind of referring to small, all these false gods that we're clamoring for, claiming the attention of God's people. And this was in a way to show that God, Yahweh, the God of Israel, was indeed the only true source of healing and refuge and serves as a denunciation of the power of any false gods, small g, that sometimes claimed the loyalty of worshipers then and still yet today. Verses 4 through 6 recognizes two very important components of this song of thanksgiving. First, that all the kings of the earth, all the nations, will ultimately acknowledge God's sovereignty, and they will do so because this God is unlike any other, unlike any of those other gods, small g. Rebecca Bear Young comments that, quote, God wants nothing to do with people who exalt themselves for their own sake. And secondly, this God exercises power that brings justice and equity to the least of these. It is this concern for the lowly, for those who are marginalized, the helpless and the needy, that was a unique concern of the God of Israel and was incorporated into the faith of the Hebrew people and consequently that of Jesus and the Christian faith. The final two verses recognize that none of us is immune to trouble, distress, pain, or loss. None of us can escape those moments in life that challenge us to the very core. A divorce, serious illness, the death of a loved one, a worldwide pandemic, and the list goes on and on. What is true, though, is that God walks with us through these crises. And when we emerge on the other side, tattered and scarred, we do so with a renewed sense of God's hesed, God's steadfast love. Robert M. Leach says it this way, God's faithfulness and love breed in us a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving, which then can appropriately be expressed in worship. As Christians, then, this is really our fundamental task, to worship, to praise God, to exalt the name of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Worship is what we are called to do as Christians. And even with a worldwide pandemic, the leadership of CPC has managed to provide worship services each and every week, including special services during the year. At first, we were only providing worship via live stream, and then later on, offering both in-person and live streaming worship opportunities. Knowing how important worship is for all of us, there was never any doubt that we had the necessary resources with our tech team, pastors, office staff, and musicians. Worship was and is a priority for God's people here at CPC, where we can express our thanksgiving and sing God's praise, even if virtually from time to time. One member of our staff who is consistently and reliably reliably provided for our worship has been Randy Benfield, our Director of Music Ministries. Randy has served faithfully in this role for 26 plus years and is our longest serving staff member. You might say that Randy has lived his life 
as a song of thanksgiving, as reflected in our text from Psalm 138 today. His professionalism, his excellence, his love for making beautiful music is an expression of praise in worship and is greatly, greatly appreciated. This past Wednesday, Randy told the choir that he was stepping down as a director of music ministries and has, in fact, submitted his letter of resignation. His last Sunday will be February 20, and I hope that you will all try to be here in person for uh, some wonderful music that I know Randy will make. It is difficult to put into words Randy's many contributions to our music ministry and to the life and ministry of CPC in general. You will be receiving a letter in the mail this week giving you an opportunity to express your gratitude for Randy and his 26 plus years of faithful service. Thank you, Randy, for teaching us how to sing songs of thanksgiving and praise in our worship life together. I conclude by reading once again Psalm 138, but this time a paraphrase by Eugene Peterson. Thank you. Everything in me says thank you. Angels listen as I sing my thanks. I kneel in worship facing your holy temple and say it again, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Most holy is your name. Most holy is your word. The moment I called out, you stepped in. You made my life large with strength. When they hear what you have to say, God, all earth's kings will say, thank you. They'll sing of what you've done, how great the glory of God. And here's why. God, high above, sees far below. No matter the distance, he knows everything about us. Oh, God, thank you and praise your most holy name. Amen and amen. Let's pray together. Wondrous and gracious God, thank you for this call to worship, to live a life of worship. Thank you for this song of thanksgiving and praise that we have read and lived into today. And thank you for those among us like Randy, who have so faithfully taught us how to sing your praise. Gracious God, Bless us as we continue to be your people of worship and praise each and every day. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
as we come to this table, table of Eucharist, of thanksgiving, of joy, of acknowledging the gift of Jesus Christ through his body broken and through his bloodshed. We gather as God's people. For those of you at home, I hope you have put together the elements for communion and will be ready to participate with us. And if you have not, please take just a moment to do that as we prepare ourselves as the community of faith here in Carmichael, sitting in these pews and at home and wherever you might find yourself today. We are indeed God's people. Here now this invitation. This is the table to which Jesus invites us. Let us participate joyfully. Let's pray. We give you thanks, O God, for the mighty sweep of your love, embracing all people and all nations. We thank you that you have sent Jesus to us to break down the walls of hostility, which divide the earth's people, and to reveal your all-encompassing love, making us all one. Through the power of your Spirit, may this unity become reality. Now, by your presence, make sacred this feast as we remember Jesus Christ. As this broken bread was scattered like grain on the hillsides, and then, when gathered together, became one loaf. So may your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your eternal realm. Like Christ, who was offered up to you that we might live, and like this cup which was poured out that all might share in the signs of new life, so may the lives of your people be poured out in compassion and in solidarity with the poor, the oppressed, and the hungry of this world. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, your servant, that we make our prayer. Amen. Amen. We remember that on the night when Jesus was arrested, he was with his friends, his disciples, and he took bread and he blessed it and broke it, and he gave it to them and said, This is my body given for you. Take, eat, in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, our Lord took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant, sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, the joyful feast for the people of God. Please take your elements and partake. Let us be in prayer together. Wondrous God, we thank you. We offer our thanks for all that you've done for us in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this joyful feast for the people of God and for your gracious and extravagant invitation which calls your people from east and west and north and south to gather and to partake. Thank you, O Lord, for those here in the sanctuary and for those at home or in other locations as together we show our unity in Christ and participating in this holy supper of thanksgiving. And so thank you for blessing us and for the mighty breath of your Holy Spirit which continues to blow in this place and all over your world. And we ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to a, <clears throat> a time of offering, my mind actually, I, I was thinking, hey, um, my, kids are, uh, my kids are athletes, they're swimmers. And um, one of the things that we like to do, and, and lots of athletes like to do, is they like to do some carbo loading. 
before they have a big race, a big swim. So they fuel their bodies up in order to go and perform at their best. Here's the table. You, the people, have fed and been nourished, fueled for ministry together. Now you have something to offer. You have something to give. You are prepared. So let us give thanks and gladly give what we have and what we have been nourished to to do as we serve in our community together. I remind you that we have this blue box up here that uh, is able to, you're you're able to put your, your physical offerings there, but also recognize that you are being nourished to have an offering of self, an offering of life, an offering of gifts in the world beyond these walls. So engage that gladly. Let's pray together as we dedicate all that we have to give. God of love and grace, we give thanks that you call us into Christ's mission and ministry. We give thanks that you feed us and you bless us and you nourish us for this ministry together. And we pray that all of the gifts that we have would be multiplied so that we may feed the hungry and shelter the poor and comfort those who suffer. Bless us also so that our lives conform to the radical love to which you call us and the love that you expect of us to share. We pray this in Christ. Amen. We lift up our prayers to get today as well for the folks in our community of faith who are, um, who are hurting, who are grieving. And we learned this week of the death of Dave Seeger. And so I'd invite you to rise in body or spirit as we remember and give thanks. For this saint of the church, for a musician, for a wonderful spouse and father, for one who led this community of faith, we give thanks for the life of David Seeger. We hold in prayer Marie and for their whole family as they now are without him. And we pray that his legacy of ministry would, would continue as we live together as a community of faith, remembering and celebrating those who have gone before us. Thank you for standing in honor and in memory of Dave. You're welcome to be seated. We don't have, um, we don't have a time yet where we might gather uh, to celebrate Dave's life, but we know that that will come about when the time is right. And for now, we continue to hold Marie and that family in prayer. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We lift up uh, prayers also for Lily Tonkin. Um, Ray Collison let us know this morning that she fell yesterday, broke her arm, is in hospital right now, recovering. Uh, We pray for Lily in her health. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray, uh, pray for Cindy Morris, who uh, has, is it surgery tomorrow? No, it was Friday. It was Friday. She's home now. And she's home now. So we lift up uh, prayers of continued healing for Cindy Morris, and this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. There are many in our community who continue to struggle for health and for wellness, and we lift up prayers of healing and good care. And this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let's pray together. God of mercy, God of grace, hear our prayers for the church and for the world. For all of your children, no matter their place or their position. Hear our prayers for the hungry and for the overfed. For those who mourn and those who mock. We pray for victims and for oppressors. For all are in need of your wisdom and all are in need of your love and all must be encouraged to hear and heed your call. As the psalmist says, deep calls to deep, but yet we splash in shallow water. Call us to deeper relationships, holy God, by listening to each other in love, and seeking the story beneath others' stories. Call us to practices of spiritual nourishment rather than the junk food that tastes good but fails to meet our deepest needs. 
Steep us in your word and practices of prayer that stretch us and expand our potential. Surround us with community that calls us to account and encourages us to be our best selves. No matter how far we wander, we thank you, O God, for always calling us home. We praise you for your grace and your mercy. And in these pandemic days of frustrating change and constant uncertainty, remind us again and again that you are always our home, our safe place, our care, our comfort. Thank you for the many ways that you stand with those who are suffering and the ways that you empower those who are facing unimaginable trials. Speed to the day, eternal God, when this pandemic will end, when suffering will cease, when your people can rest, and when all creation can know your promised peace. United as the body of Christ in our world, we lift up our prayers to you. Hear us now as we pray the prayer that he taught us by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just a reminder that uh, following the postlude, uh, please stay in the sanctuary. Um, we'll be having our annual meeting. Um, we'll try to keep it as short as possible, um, uh, but we'd appreciate your being present. And for those of you at home, please continue to tune in uh, and be with us uh, via live streaming as we will conduct that annual meeting in just a moment. As you go forth from this place today, go forth as people who know how to worship, who know how to give thanks in their lives, who know how to share the good news of Jesus Christ, and will actively seek to catch people and to include them in your circle of faithfulness and include them in the life of this community of faith. So friends, go forward as faithful disciples who know how to worship with thanksgiving each and every day. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen.
Thanks, Randy. All right. Um, does everybody have uh, the handouts that were available on either table? If not, Kathy Lewin is passing those things out right now, making sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Making sure that everybody has a copy of the material. Steve. Um, oh, thank you. I'm, Steve's sending me messages here on the TV screen. 78 viewers right now, so I think we have definitely have a quorum between in-person and those who are watching. So thank you both here and at home for being a part of our annual meeting. So um, let me open us with prayer. Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you for the work of Jesus Christ in this place. Thank you for your call to be disciples, to be fishers of people. Thank you for teaching us how to worship with thanksgiving, with hearts filled with love and devotion for our God. And gracious God, may the work of this, your church, reflect that devotion as we conduct that work here today. And we give you thanks and ask your blessings upon this meeting, and we pray it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, officially, I declare a quorum, if we didn't get that already in the list. Um, we're now going to recognize uh, the folks uh, in the church triumphant uh, list of names in your annual report on page six of all of those who have entered the church triumphant this past year, 2021. And as we do that, I would invite you to stand as you are able and I am going to read that list of names of these saints that have gone before us. Mildred Troop, Sue Carpenter, Don White, Carol Piper, Jack. Roach, John Irwin, Betty Majesty, Dick Piper, Nadine Hills, Gary Lee, Francis Messenger, Lois Griffin, Ruth Duncan, Ron Dobler, Dorothy Woodstrom, Vicki Tozier, Tom Hill. All saints who have contributed to the life, ministry, history, and heritage of Carmichael Presbyterian Church for decades upon decades, for which we are truly thankful. Amen and amen. You may be seated, please. Thank you. All right, we have uh, printed for you three sets of minutes. Uh, the first one is January 31. Any corrections necessary? Hearing none, those stand approved. Minutes from May 16, 2021. Corrections, additions, rewrites, hearing none, those are approved. And finally, September 19, 2021, hearing no comment, those stand approved as well. Thank you. Anything else, Linda, from, in your report? Okay, great. All right. Um, we now go to our financial report. Where's Tim? There's Tim. Tim's going to come up to the lectern. Um, first, he's going to review uh, finances for 21, um, tell you how we did, and uh, be available to take any questions uh, you might have. And uh, that should be, um, there should be a summary printed. Sometimes we make out a full line by line, and if you're interested in seeing how everything was expended, you always can ask and get that information 
uh, without a doubt, without question. Um, and we print up a number of copies for you anyway, just in case. So we try to be very transparent about uh, how the finances are here. And I will turn it over to Tim. Good morning. I'm going to talk about two things, as Keith said, the 2021 budget and how we did, and the 2022 budget and how it looks. So two topics. Um, are you familiar with yay boo stories? What, have you told yay boo stories to your kids or to your grandkids? <clears throat> it goes like you have a positive statement and you say yay, and you have a negative statement and you say boo. The example Keith gave this morning was, did you watch the football game last week? Yay, yes I did, yay. Did your team win? No. Boo. Okay, well the two topics I'm gonna talk about this morning is they're not a yay boo story. It's a yay yay story. So oh, yay. I'm, happy, I'm happy that it's a yay yay story. It makes it real easy to give good news. So at the end of, um, we looked at the end of the 2021 budget and how the income came in and how the expenses looked. And some remarkable things happened last year. <clears throat> First of all, in the pledge contributions category, um, the result was that compared to what we thought we were going to get in pledges and what we actually got, what we actually got was 99.5% of what we thought we were going to get. It's a remarkable statistic, it's remarkable. And that's the pledge amount. And we have some other minor, relatively minor, things that we get as income during the year. And if you add those in, and we budget for them, we estimate them, if you add that in, those, those, that income, and you say, well, how did we do for total income? It was 101% of what we estimated. So that was really fantastic news. Then, on the other side of the equation, looking at total expenses for the year, the total expenses for the year in the budget, what we actually spent was 5.5% under our estimate of what we spent. So if you take the fact that we raised everything we thought we were gonna raise and more, and we spent less than we estimated we would spend, we came out with $55,000 over. So we were able to put that $55,000 in the operating reserve, um, as we do at the end of every year when we have a surplus, and that's there for uh, expenditures approved by session for any special need that comes up um, during the year, the following year, or subsequent years. So we did really great. And, and I have to give praise to you, the congregants, uh, for making that happen. So we ended up with a surplus for 2021. <clears throat> In looking at the 2022 budget. Why don't we just pause there for a minute in case there's any questions for 21 okay. before you go on to the next one. Okay. Yeah, any uh, questions for his report on the 21 budget? It's all good news, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, now okay. start. Okay. The 2022 budget, as I said, it's, it's a yay story also. Um, after a very successful um, stewardship drive uh, led by the Stewardship Committee and Laura Janik, um, the pledges for that drive and the pledges that we have to use in the 2022 budget were up 6% over 2021. That may not sound like a lot, but it is a lot when you consider that our pledges are in the $700,000 range. 6% uh, higher in 2022 over 2021. And adding in the other um, sources of income that I mentioned earlier, our total income was up, or will be up this year, $45,000. So we said, okay, what are we gonna do with that $45,000? We're, we're gonna 
take in 45,000 more than we did last year, what are we going to do? And so there were some budget decisions made. And the first decision was to give staff a 3% raise and a bonus of $5,000 to be allocated by the personnel committee. Special bonus, one year bonus for the extra effort that the whole staff put in during this last year during the pandemic. So staff, 3% raise, $5,000 bonus. And all the divisions will notice, or have noticed by now, that they all received an increase in their budgets. Even if they didn't ask for one, we're going to give each one. And a couple of, couple of the divisions did ask for raises. And the largest one, which I want to point out, um, was for the mission budget. Um, they received uh, the highest. Um, um, increase to their budget, and it will prim primarily go to local mission activities um, that, and will give them more flexibility in doing local mission activities. So that, that's the second half of my story this morning. It's the other boo part, so I'm open for questions. Okay. I mean, it's the second what yay do you mean? start. It's the yay. I can't it's even yay. keep it straight. Yeah, sorry. Got that We're getting wrong. mixed messages here, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Are there any uh, questions for his uh, report summary of the 22 budget? Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. All good. All right. Oh, no questions online? Nope. It says no. You got in the small box, Steve. How can I read that? Oh, there we go. I, no questions online. Thank you. So Steve is monitoring that. So if somebody from home has a question, they relay it to the computer, and he puts it up on the screen. And if I look up there, I would notice that. All right. Thank you. Uh, let me ask uh, Dave Studer to come forward. Dave's the chair of personnel. He's going to make his report, including voting on the terms of call for Pastor Ivan and myself. And usually that's our cue to sneak out, and uh, we will go to the Welcome Center. We'll just hang out there. Come find us when you need us back. Uh, before you leave, is, is Jenny here? I don't know if she made it. I, I just She wanted... was going to try to be here, but... So a, a so. while back, um, we had... Uh, a recognition of Jenny's years as the director of our contemporary music team, and uh, we've heard enough of that. But I, w I wanted to let you know that we sent a letter out, as we is our tradition for long-term employees, um, saying if you would like to thank in a more substantial way by a financial gift. And so, in talking to Paul Schultz, on Friday, I understand that uh, we will be presenting her with a check of over $4,500. I wish she was here that we could, uh, and, and with all the nice things that uh, we said about her, probably her biggest accomplishment was uh, getting along with the head of hey. staff. Hey. <laughs> true though, very true. Thank you. Thank, okay, thank you. And I'm glad I came, Tim. Um, I kind of misunderstood the $5,000 for the personnel committee. There's five of us on the committee. We figured it was 1000 bucks a piece, but <laughs> I, I'm glad that you uh, uh, clarified that. It, it, is, it is a great pl uh, uh, pleasure to uh, be chair of the personnel committee of this uh, staff. It is absolutely a wonderful staff. They work very hard. They've been very creative over this time of pandemic. And I know Keith will, will discuss this uh, uh, further, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful staff and they, they do work very hard for us. Also, uh, one, one of the things that comes with the budget that uh, the session does not approve, and that is for the terms of call. We decide that. And based upon a recommendation of the Personnel Committee and administration and uh, upon recognition uh, by the session, I'd like to present terms of call, which it also includes a 3% uh, increase over uh, past years. 
We also, uh, a while back, uh, sent a uh, letter out for Pastor Keith on his anniversary for a sabbatical. Uh, I still talk to him regularly about a sabbatical. Uh, sometimes I uh, uh, remind him that uh, I may not discuss it with him anymore, but I usually designate somebody else to take my place. Uh, and we do hope that uh, he will be able to take a sabbatical, and he currently has over $12,000 in that account. So at some point, based upon your generosity and gifts, when we sent that letter out, we do hope that at some point he'll be able to take a uh, well-deserved uh, uh, sabbatical. I have uh, uh, been involved with our uh, presbytery for a number of years and have listened to pastors that have uh, dealt with the past couple of years of pandemic, and they struggle with, with this. And uh, our pastors have provided some terrific leadership uh, with us with, through this congregation over these uh, past two years. And so um, I'm always happy to present uh, terms of call. And I, so I will read these uh, out. We'll start with uh, Pastor Ivan Herman. His salary uh, will be 32388 housing 34603 with an effective salary of 66991 We pay 37% into the Board of Pensions for uh, medical, uh, disability, uh, death benefits of 24787 dental of 1753 uh, He, We do pay uh, half of the SECA of 5124 We I do discuss this every year. It's actually we reduced his salary by that same amount. It gives him a little bit more spending money now and a little less money at uh, retirement time. Uh, Professional reimbursement of $2,700, study leave of 2,000, with a total cost to the church of 103,355. So I present this to you. Are there, uh, unless I hear an objection, I will assume that uh, we have approved this. But I think maybe it's better if we do it in person, right? All in favor say, yay, yay. <laughs> For uh, Pastor Keith DeFries, salary of 66,443, housing 36,000 with an effective salary of 102,443. Pension and disability amounts to 37,904, dental of $1,025, professional reimbursement of $2,700, study leave of 2,000 with a uh, total cost to the church of $146,072. And I present these terms, and all in favor, please say yay. yay. And they also, as part of the terms for, for both of them, they get um, four weeks of vacation, two weeks study leave, two weekends off each year, and a uh, sabbatical after serving six years, and we know that Ivan's got one probably coming up that we will, you know, I, it will be on my agenda to have a conversation uh, with him. So if somebody would like to go and find them, we can thank them with our applause. My favorite Dennis Mark story, I was moderator of the nominating committee and I asked him to be an elder and, uh, and he agreed and he made a beeline after we installed and ordained him, and he said, three years? It was three years that I agreed to? <laughs> and I, of course, said, oops. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much on my behalf, on Ivan's behalf. Uh, we truly find it a joy to pass through this congregation. Um, it really is a privilege for both of us, so thank you. Um, all right, we are coming to the nominating report, so I'm going to ask Bill Dunn to come up. 
and uh, we're going to elect some elders, some deacons, and nominating committee members. And if you are present, um, it'd be great if you could just kind of walk up in the front, stand, you know, six feet apart from each other, but just so people can see who you are, because not everybody knows uh, who everybody is on this list. So, all right, Bill, take it away. Uh, first thing, yes, Dave, it's three years. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, first, I want to thank uh, the nominating committee. They worked very hard this year. We started off slowly, but built some <clears> steam, and we almost have a full, full group here. Um, and their names are Ernie Chard, Tim Farley, Elizabeth Phillips, Marty Wallace, and I guess I got to mention Pastor T. So. You and I haven't talked. How do we want to do this? You okay, want... so uh, why don't you just read the names for, let's go with elders first. Elders first. And okay. we'll have those folks come up, and then we'll do the appropriate motions. Okay, we'll start off with um, uh, Bob Curtis, who's going to be in the mission division. And he's the class of 2024. It's a two-year position because we did not fill it last year. Yeah, just stand over there. Uh, Allison Cagley in the administration division, class of 2025. David Matthews, mission division, class of 2025. Elizabeth Phillips, I don't know if Elizabeth is here. She's taking my place, nominating committee <laughs> moderator. Class of two says that with a smile. <clears throat> and Kathy Phillips, Worship Division, class of 2025. And Kathy is home with a sore throat. Yeah, okay. All right, there is your slate. Um, <clears throat> everybody can see them. Are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, I would entertain the unanimous ballot that we joyously elect these folks. All in favor say amen. 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 Any opposed carried. It's done. You're elected. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we we still have a we we still have one uh, Elder. But we think it might be filled soon, so you, we'll come back to you with that at another future yeah. uh, congregational meeting to finalize that spot. And do you want to mention Lynette? And we we'll have to fill uh, Lynette's spot. She uh, has resigned from session with all the things that are going on in her life now with the death of Mike. So, so the so. nominating committee has a little bit more work to do. Yeah. Uh, so answer the phone call when you get it. And say yes. yes. Please don't do the caller ID thing and just ignore Bill when he calls. It, it hurts his feelings. <laughs> so just answer the, answer the phone. Thank you. OK, for deacons, <clears throat> uh, we have a one-year position. Uh, and Barbara Lawton has agreed to extend her term. And that will be for the class of 2023. Uh, Janet Olson, it's a two-year position, and she will ex extend hers, and that will be for the class of 2024. <clears throat> and then for the class of 2025, we have Debbie Cameron, Kate Eisel, Charlotte Frank, Richard Frank, Carol Honnold, Charlene Lee, Aaron Pace, and Karen Treon.
Yeah, the deacon ministry is, you know, one of the most important ministries in the life of the church, and we have been blessed with some wonderful deacons uh, throughout our history, and this is another example of some of those wonderful deacons who are saying yes uh, to this invitation to serve, and we greatly appreciate you. Are there any uh, nominations from the floor? Hearing none, I would entertain the unanimous ballot. All of us together say yes. Yes. Any opposed? Carrie, you are officially elected. <clears throat> Thank you. No uh, nominating committee folks, Bill? Do we don't have any other? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right, uh, we're just, this is the, just the, briefly the, the time when if there are questions that you may have about something that happened in the year 21 via the annual reports, um, you probably have not had a chance to really read through those, but um, if there are representatives from those divisions here that they're here to answer your questions. So um, I'm just gonna, if there are questions that anybody has at this point, please let us know. I'll either have that question try to be answered here now, or I'll just make sure you know where that person is in the, the sanctuary and you can go to them afterwards. So, do you have any questions um, about the annual reports that you might have already browsed through for any of our division chairs? Let me just ask those who are chairs to stand if they're currently here. Let's see, education, do we have um, Beth and Clint are worship, and so if you have a worship question, you could find them after we're done. Um, education, is education, uh, Terrell's not here currently. Fellowship and nurture, um, oh, there's Maria, hi Maria, great. So if you have a fellowship and nurture question, Maria could answer that for you, there she is. All right, thank you. Uh, mission, there's Hal back there, if you have a question about mission, you can talk to Hal. Uh, membership and outreach, Kathy Lewis is, oh, Ann Parker, if you have a membership and outreach question, she can respond. Uh, church administration, did I see Laura, Jan there we go, Laura is here, um, if you have a question or comment, you can speak to her. Um, gifts of bequest, Bill Dunn, who you just saw up here, he can answer any of your questions. And uh, Kathy Lewin, the deacon board, if you have a question for the deacon. Okay, great, thank you. Um, just a, finally, a, a few words of, of thank you. Um, first of all, just thanks for all of you, for your amazing generosity, your commitment, your dedication. Um, you know, life has not been easy for anybody on the planet the last couple of years, but you all have just contributed so uh, graciously. So thank you so much. For those of you who have taken a little bit extra responsibility as elders and deacons, um, You've done amazing work, and you are appreciated. Um, and personally, um, I'm the luckiest pastor on the planet. I get to work with the best church staff that I've ever, ever seen. I am so lucky and grateful, and I thank uh, your amazing church staff um, that really helps keep this place running smoothly uh, with all of your help. So thank you very, very much. Um, with those words of gratitude, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Ivan to close out our meeting. We like little traditions sometimes. I like little traditions. And one of my little traditions at the end of the annual meeting is to sing. Right? And it's to sing a, a blessing of peace. And I want you to sing it with me if you still remember it. If you don't, I'm going to sing it twice. So by the second time, you'll have it down. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the love of God surround you. Everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you. Everywhere, everywhere you may go. May the God of love bless you on this journey as we support and love one another, 
as we seek justice in our world, and as we build together a more beloved kingdom. God bless you. Look forward to our next time together. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.